Kansas State beats TCU 24 to 17 today here inside of Bill Snyder Family Stadium. Moves the Wildcats to four and two on the season and gives Chris Kleiman his first Big 12 win at Kansas State. I'm Matt Hall, joined by Derek Young of K-State Online. This is the KSO Sunday Show, which is brought to you by People's State Bank and Legacy Insurance. In segment one here, we're going to walk you through every scoring drive. Flanders will have highlights in the background, so you can see what was going on. Before we get to that, though, Derek, I just want to ask your opinion. How big a win was this today? K-State, of course, has a chance of losing its fourth, well, third straight Big 12 game at that point, facing Oklahoma next week. How crucial was it for K-State to get this win over TCU? I think it was very crucial. I called it a swing game before yeah. we even got to I think it was last week I called it a swing game because if you don't win this game, you're for all intents and purposes, you're going to lose four straight Big 12 right. games because you're probably going to fall to OU at home the following week. It keeps you above 500 in case you do lose to OU. And then you got KU right after the OU game. So it puts them in position to stay above 500, stay afloat the entire year. It definitely puts a bowl game back on the docket. Well said. Couldn't agree more. We're going to go score by score to talk you through this game again as K-State beats TCU, TCU today Pardon me, 24-17 in Manhattan to move to 4-2 and two on the season. Derek, first points of the game come on a 21-yard touchdown pass from Skylar Thompson to Nick Lenners. First touchdown catch of Nick Lenners' career. Puts Casey up 7-0 with 9.56 left in the first quarter. D.Y., of course, this is set up by a big play on special teams where I believe it's Jonathan Alexander who both blocks and recovers a punt to set Casey up essentially in TCU's red zone. Yeah, it's something I, I talked about earlier uh, in the season, actually, is trying to score without uh, having the offense uh, – help you out the production from the offense because they the offense is limited there's only so much that it can do because of the lack of weapons so they need help from elsewhere they need help from the defense they need help from the special teams and when that's happened Jonathan Alexander has actually been the guy to answer yep. the bell in both cases and one of the first two games of this season he picked up a fumble a scoop and score for a touchdown today it was the block punt so he's kind of got a little bit of an act and penchant to do this it's just hard to count on him to do it every week absolutely but you're right I think it was the opener he had the scoop and score for a touchdown and then today we talked coming into this game about the need for either the defense or special teams or someone to set case it up in scoring range and it happened on that first play and I think it was absolutely huge because momentum was big in this one D. Yeah it was real big and it was good to score first too. Uh, uh, it was their first lead since beating Mississippi State good call. Uh, in the non-conference so not just to, you know scoring first but you know they had led in o over a month so that that was just probably big for the feelings and Nick Lenners getting his right. first touchdown of his career. Nick Lenners like you said first score. Nick Lenners today had two catches for 34 yards and that 21 yard touchdown down pass from Skylar Thompson. The Wildcats maintained that 7 0 lead until early in the second quarter when Seo Alana Lua ran for in from eight yards out, followed up by a Jonathan Song kick. That's a 7 7 tie with 13 43 left in the second quarter. DY, the problem in this drive is not just you give up a touchdown to TCU to tie the game up, but those 10 plays were all runs. They didn't have a completed pass in that play. They had a sack they took in that, excuse me, in that series. So not only are you tied 7 7, but TCU just kind of ran the ball down your throat a little bit. Yeah, and it's a wonder uh, why TCU didn't really stick. To, to that kind of formula the entire game. That's one where Gary Patterson's probably going to kick himself for probably multiple weeks because I'm not saying it's inexcusable, but it's it's very confusing of why they didn't choose to go that route. Kansas State, not just that drive, probably you could definitely make an argument, not even an argument. They struggled to stop the run the entire game. There wasn't one point in the contest where I felt like, hey, they've really figured out this run run game for TCU. And it wasn't really about figuring the run game out. They had guys in play to make it posi right. in position to make it play. It was the missed tackling once again that's plagued them throughout the year. And it was a big issue. TCU for the day carried the ball 40 times for 228 yards to two. So to DY's point, that's a team averaging well over five yards a carry. Um, you would think that's something that you could continue with. And the passing game was a big, big struggle for TCU on the flip side. Max Duggan did complete 16 passes, but only for 132 yards. But in some perspective, Skylar Thompson only completed 11, but for 172 and two touchdowns. So when they threw at DY, they weren't efficient. So let's give K-State's pass defense some credit. The pass rush to secondary must have played pretty well today for the Wildcats. Yeah, and actually, you said 16 for over 130, uh, 16 completions for over 130 yards from TCU. I think through the first 14 completions, so it was actually only for 81 yards yep. before it got to that point. So the, the latter two throws obviously kind of threw those numbers off and, and probably misled what the ultimate no you know, the ultimate conclusion you could draw from. TC or K State's pass defense, you could say, had a good day because of that. They also missed opportunities. We'll probably talk oh. about later. Kevion McGee probably had an interception in his lap that he didn't take advantage of. AJ Parker dropped an interception on the last drive of the game. Kevin McGee, I'll stick on that for just a second. We think he's playing really, really well. He I is. think silently we've said to each other, not silently, but in the press box, he might be K-State's best corner. I agree. So we're not trying to pick on Kevin McGee, but that was a big play. <laughs> um, absolutely had a chance to make a big play. Didn't happen. K-State still wins. Let's get back to the scoring here. With 530 left in the second quarter, K-State scores again using their own passing game again. Wyking Gill 
who had a nice game today for K-State. Good to see him kind of emerge. Scores from 13 yards out on Skylar Thompson's second touchdown pass of the day. Blake Lynch, of course, makes the extra point. That's a nine-play, 74-yard drive that took 4.35 off the clock, and Derek K-State regains the lead 14-7 with 5.30 left to play in the second quarter of this one. Yeah, career day for Nick Lenners, career day for Y. King Gill. Really good to see him come off the schneid. I think Chris Kleiman said that part of the reason why we saw Y. King Gill emerge is we finally see him a little bit healthy. He was dealing with a nagging hamstring injury uh, prior to this week's game, and he actually had another ball that went uh, – they didn't were able to take advantage of Skylar Thompson. Found Wyking Gill wide open middle of the field. I think it was on a post route. Would have went for a touchdown slightly overthrew him. So although Wyking Gill had a bigger day, he could have had it even bigger to game. I'm not trying to set us up to pile on a former Wildcat and a good kid and Alex Delton, who's done a lot of great things for K-State, beat KU in this stadium last year. So that's not the point. But I do have to ask you from a coaching perspective, before that touchdown to Wyking Gill, it's 7-7. Seven, seven. TCU switches to Alex Delton, goes three and out for the only time the entire game. That was their only three and out before that and after that was with Alex Delton. They didn't move the ball there. How surprised were you? Not that Alex Delton played in this game, but that was a scenario with, with, with which he went into the ball game for TCU. Yeah, I wasn't surprised that Alex Delton played. I was surprised about the timing of when they inserted him into the game because it was after TCU's first scoring drive of the game. Right. And one Another reason to kind of be surprised, it was it was a scoring drive where you've already co or commented on it. They ran it 10 times on 10 plays. So if Alex Dalton comes into the game, you would think that they would keep up that trend because that was what was successful on the drive prior. Instead, they bring Dalton to the game for three plays. He throws on two right. of them. It's, it's a very, very confusing matter. They asked Gary Patterson after the game about, you know, the timing of putting Alex Delton in the game and said, well, I wanted to put him in the first quarter. So I got to the second quarter. I was like, well, he hasn't played yet. It was what are these guys that were, he just said, Hey, I need to put him in the game. Yeah, it is what it is. You know, we talked to the press box about guessing maybe they just had, you know, a package they're going to use the first drive, the second quarter, or whatever it was. But, no, it's not quite that simple. They just wanted to get him in. Didn't go very well. I mean, the first pass he threw, again, I'm not trying to rip on him, but the ball was a lateral that lost them three yards. It really uh, stunted, I thought, TCU's offense. They do go back to Doug, and they do score again before halftime on a Jonathan Song 36-yard field goal. Ten plays, 54 yards, uh, 4.56 taken off the clock. That field goal came, Derek, with 33 seconds left in the first half to make it 14-10. Probably a big play by the case. State defense to force a 36-yard relatively short field goal try there as opposed to being tied going into the locker room. Yeah, if, if it was tied to going to the locker room, I probably wouldn't have felt as optimistic as I initially did because I went into halftime up four and feeling pretty good about the Wildcats' chances had it been the opposite, had they scored a touchdown. If it was tied uh, with them having the momentum going into the second half, I probably wouldn't have felt as great. But again, Kansas State was getting the ball first in the second half, so they kind of shifted uh, things as well. So that's your score at halftime, 14-10. K-State has the edge. Doesn't take the Wildcats very long to score to get the second half going. It's a Blake Lynch 21-yard field goal with 11.30 left in the third quarter that made it 17-10 in favor of K-State. Derek, I know, I remember you saying in the press box that you were concerned that K-State didn't get six there. You thought they were going to need it. You weren't critical, and I don't think I was either. You got to kick the field goal, I think, on fourth and goal from the five or whatever it was. But I was concerned at the time that the three would come back to bite them, and it kind of did a little bit, D.Y. Yeah, I was, I was really concerned because – uh, had a chance, really, first first and goal, inside to 10. Had a chance to go up 21 to 10. Yep. Uh, and, and I think there was a play there where it looked like they kind of left something off the field as well on a play action on third down on the rollout. Skylar Thompson just has to evade the defensive end, make one guy miss, couldn't get away. If he does, you come in and during the game, he probably walks in for right. a score that close to a 21 to 10 lead. Instead, it stays a one possession game. Terrified me because I was worried that TCU would score nearly immediately afterwards, and it turned out they did. They sure did. Uh, it was less than three minutes later, 8.42 left in the third quarter when Max Duggan scores from 46 yards out, five plays, 75 yards, 248 at 17-17, with almost nine minutes left in the third quarter. So a lot of game went without any more scoring in this one. A drive where K-State had TCU backed up in a third and 10 deep in their own territory. I think inside the 20, Duggan carries for 24 yards in the first down. The next play, he goes 49 and scores, breaking in a number of tacklers. And we're at 17-17 with nine minutes left in the third quarter. The way that happened, uh, that run, probably a very unfortunate display of tackling and, and in some ways effort by the Kansas State defense on that play. And not necessarily effort, but being a little bit lazy yeah. in some of their uh, manners and how they were going about that play. That that The way that happened, I started to think that TCU was going to take control of that game because that's a really deflating play, uh, both not – not just taking the wind out of the stadium, but taking a wind out of the Kansas State sideline because they realized how how bad that looked, how, how poorly that was played, and then come 
compound that with I think they went three and out on the following drive, K-State. Yep. I was starting to feel like TCU was beginning to take control of this game at that point. I was very concerned, too. We're about done with segment one here of the KSO Sunday Show. We've come back with segment two. We'll talk to Chris Kleiman. Segment three, we're going to wrap it up big picture. But there's one more score to talk about. It was the game winner. Drive of the year for K-State. 11 plays, 95 yards. 518 taken off the clock. Skyler Thompson caps it off with a three yard touchdown run over right end off a of zone read, I believe, as you said, which is correct. So 24 17 K State, pardon me, that was the final margin. What a drive for K State, in all honesty. I mean, drive of the year uh, is pretty easy to say when we're only six games into the season, but they needed it. It was the game winner, 95 yards. I didn't know this offense could do that. Yeah, it's partially because some of the stuff that worked for the offense on that play, some stuff that they hadn't really put in entirely that much this year. It was the QB run. We saw, saw it a lot under Bill Snyder. We saw it probably be the deciding factor for a win for Chris Kleiman today. I agree. Uh, that would be the drive of the year. Also, great decision on Skylar Thompson to pull that zone read uh, and keep that because that was a read, and Chris Kleiman right. talked about it. He could have gave, gave it up to the back. He kept it himself. So good, good decision by Skylar Thompson. Great play call by Courtney Messingham. No doubt about it. That's the final. K-State beats TCU 24-17. to I'll be back for segment two to introduce Chris Kleiman's postgame press conference before we bring Derek back for segment three to talk big picture. This is the KSO Sunday Show brought to you by People State Bank and Legacy Insurance. You know, we're definitely very capable of, you know, playing very well. And, uh, you know, even though we came out with the win, we still have a lot of mistakes and uh, a lot of things that we can fix on. Uh, you know, tackling, for example, you know, there's a lot of broken tackles in this game. And, uh, you know, we just got to we just got to get a tackle on contact. And, you know, we can't let the ball carry get any yards, you know, after, after contact. So that's one thing we're definitely going to work on. Yeah, well, it's just, uh, it's huge. It's huge. You know, we, we have a great start to the season, um, hit a bump in the road, lose two in a row, have a bye week. And you know that bye week, it was that was the an opportunity for us as a team. Are are we gonna buckle down here and fight and not let this first quarter of the season define the rest of our season, or are we gonna give up and give in to to what we've you know faced the past two weeks? And this team buckled down, um, came together harder than ever. We worked harder than ever. Had a great two weeks of practice, um, and nobody nobody flinched. You know, and like we knew, we knew we were just one play or two plays away from getting things going and getting in the rhythm and playing as a team again. And um, you know, it was it, it's a huge win for us to go out there and, and face some adversity, um, have some things not go our way, and find a way to win. You know, those, those are the grinders. You know, and uh, we were just we were we were searching for a win. We needed. We needed to win so bad, um, so I was happy to be a part of it um, and, and whatnot. But you know, like Coach Kleiman um, has said a lot, uh, we just can't. We got to focus on one play at a time, one day at a time, and not focus on the, the ending results. You know, because if you focus on the end of the results of things, you're gonna put pressure on yourself and play tight. Um, and, and that's when you make mistakes. So it's about our whole team, just focusing on our job, focusing on one play at a time, focus on, you know, for me, just, you know, executing my footwork, executing my reads, making a good throw, being on time. Like all that stuff is, is under my control and I, that's all I can focus on. And, and that's all I can do. And that's all for every position group. That's all anybody can do. Um, and if we do that, we'll, we'll be successful no matter what. How good was Skyler on the last drive that you guys had? Oh man, hell of a leader. I don't know what else to say about him, you know. He really took it all on his shoulders and just showed us. He, he told us he's gonna lead the charge. And that's exactly what he did that last drive and the whole game. You know, I was thinking after the game that, you know, this is the first time I feel like that I've kind of come out and had a good start to a game throwing the ball, um, getting some touchdowns, you know, like I feel like we always kind of the past, you know, couple of weeks we've struggled at the beginning of the game. And we had a huge pump block and put us in a great field position, but we executed that play um, great and, and same for, for Joaquin. And it was, it was a great, um, you know, play call and we executed the, the play perfectly. Um, and Joaquin ran a great route and got into the end zone for me. I thought Joaquin played great today. Um, you know, him and I, Early on in this in this season, you know, we were just hitting minutes, just couldn't get on the, you know, on the same page. I was just missing him here and there. Uh, he's, he's done some great things for us, um, and I missed him across the middle today, early in the game. That probably would have been another big play. But you know, that's the thing is just having a short-term memory and not getting hung up on on a play and keep believing and keep trusting one another. And Joaquin did that, and I told him I was going to keep going on the ball, just keep working for me. So. He did that and, and did a great job, and it was, a, it was a great team effort today. Yeah, well, we needed it. Um, I think Baylor was winnable, and Oklahoma State was winnable too. A lot of people, you know, 
on Twitter and newspapers and all that. They don't think so, but um, I do think that we came out and we had a mindset just fourth quarter battle, um, all, all game, not giving up. And so um, it was really important to get a win, especially the first Big 12 play. It was just the coaches, you know, they have us amped. Uh, the leaders are really stepping up. They're really getting us going. And just knowing, like, we're K-State, we're going to do K-State football and just going out there and performing. Well, the model we had, uh, you know, this last bye week and this week was uh, good play, bad play, next play. And, uh, you know, you know my where we were at on the field, what down distance it was, uh, you know, especially if we, we did get in, in third down, third long, uh, you know, that was just the play that was the most important play of the game. And uh, that's how we approached it, and that was, that was our mindset this whole week. And, uh, you know, I, I credit that, you know, just to getting us off the field, you know, getting us a win. You know, we talked on the sideline, those are, you know, the situations that we practice for, and, you know, really why we play the game, you know, to be out there in those big, big situations like that. So to be able to come through in those, you know, it's awesome, and, you know, just adds to that, you know, great feeling we have right now. Hi there. This is the KSO Sunday Show brought to you by People's State Bank and Legacy Insurance. Here in segment two, we give you Chris Kleiman's post-game press conference. Certainly happy after today's 24-17 win over TCU here inside of Bill Snyder Family Stadium. So excited for the players uh, and the coaching staff. Put a lot of hard work in the last two weeks. Um, and uh, we know it's not perfect by any means, but uh, can't tell you how happy I, am, happy I am with the resolve that those guys showed. Uh, it was uh, it was a back and forth game, and um, we made some plays that we hadn't made in the past. And uh, a credit to credit to our guys that made the plays. Now uh, I thought Skyler was big time when he needed to be, uh, and uh, got us some field position with with his running and, and, and throwing ability. And um, then on defense, I think the first guy on defense we have to praise is Devin Ankel. because Devin Ankel kept putting him in bad situations and as as. Poorly as we tackled still, and we need to continue to work it and get better, um, we were able to make some stops on, on third down and even fourth down to hold them to 17 points. And so, um, you know, I, I told the guys, you just got to have, you got to keep believing and keep having resolve. We're going to have some, we're going to have some tough times. We're going to have some great times, but uh, you got to keep battling for each other. And, and we talked about just winning the play and, and not worrying about the scoreboard. And uh, uh, we were able to do that and, and, and find a way in the fourth quarter. That's what I'm hoping we can build off of. Is we found a way in the fourth quarter to make a couple of stops, drive it 95 yards and get a touchdown, and then you know essentially run out the clock. And so obviously ecstatic for for the players first, and and then for the staff as well because this was a, this was a big win for the program. When you absolutely needed to have it, Skyler stepped up and of course had that had that big run, 95 yard drive. Can you walk us through that 61-yard run, first of all, and just how pleased you were with that overall drive? Well, the drive in general, I remember when we talked to Coach Mess, let's be aggressive. You know, they kicked it down to the five. We could easily run it three times, punt it back to them, and, and take our chances. We said, let's be aggressive. Uh, and we throw it on first down, and, and Malik almost makes a guy miss and takes it 70 to 90 yards himself, but we get a, a second and five. And then we were running a lot of sh shallow crossing mesh routes and stuff where they were doing a good job uh, later on of picking them up. But when you do that, you lose your eyes on the quarterback. So Scott. Um, Skyler saw the opening uh, after the mesh route was taken away uh, and then made a big play. But just making that play was important. What, what we hadn't done is have an explosive play and then all of a sudden you end up not, not getting anything out of it. But to be able to finish the drive, Sebastian makes a big catch. Uh, we actually convert a fourth and one. You know, it was good stuff. And, and there was not a question in our mind that we were going for that on fourth down because I didn't want to have a three-point lead. We wanted to have a seven-point lead. And so, obviously, uh, and then cap it off with Skyler making a tough run. Did you go into this game thinking it would be a game where Skyler could make some plays and take advantage of it? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Just because of all the the man coverage that they played, uh, and, and I and they played, I thought really good against us on defense. They really did a great job of of trying to uh, match some some cover, match some routes with their coverage, and and uh, trying to stop our run game. And uh, you know, we we didn't have Phillip Brooks. We had Malik Knowles for basically a half. Um, you know, we're, we're banged up at a lot of spots, but we we were able to find enough um, and, and make enough plays. Was it essentially like a pitch count kind of thing then with Malik? Yeah, it really was. He didn't practice all week. And, um, you know, then when Philip wasn't able to go and he practiced a little bit and we, we thought it was close with Philip, but he couldn't go, that, um, you know, we said, hey, let's let's work for the second half and see if we could get him in there and get some plays. You did a good job with 
the running back, the defense will be holding their running backs. But Newton gets, something gets loose. Is that really unexpected? It really was, because we were, we were thinking that was going to be more Delton. And so we had a game plan for Max and didn't execute it very well uh, and had a game plan uh, a little bit for Delton. And we only had him, I think, maybe three or four plays. Um, and, and so we kind of had to flip it a little bit in the second half. And, and I give uh, Doug and a, Dugan a ton of credit because he, he hadn't shown that. Uh, on film, um, but he's a tough kid. He's only a freshman. I thought he played exceptionally well. Um, but uh, all those things being said, I thought our pass defense is what really won us the football game. Pass rush and pass defense. So you got touchdown pass to start the game to Nick Leonard when you got them to fight on the, or when you had set for play action. Do you think that opened up things for the rest of the game? Showing the there? Yeah, I think so. You know, we'd, we'd, we'd seen that um, where we could maybe lose the, the inside linebacker's eyes and get uh, Leonard's behind him. And um, we were trying to do some things with motions to try to lose the linebacker's eyes to get some a semblance of a, of a rush game going early. And, and uh, obviously um, our, our play action has to continue to improve, but our running game has to improve for our play action too. Uh, why, why Hubert's uh, sack? Could you talk about that? How big you know, he has a big motor, and then how, how that was how that was important in the game. Yeah, it was a big play on that. Uh, you're talking on the last drive, I believe. Yeah, he makes, uh, well, we called a pressure and let the ends get upfield and go, and he dipped the corner really well. And, and you're right, to get him into a second and, and 19 or whatever it was after they had, uh, you know, thrown a couple of passes to number one, who's a great player, we were able to at least get him off, off schedule on the chains. And then, you know, we pressured him on the last play on fourth down. We said, we're not going to let that quarterback sit back there or run the ball to beat us. We were going to bring heat. Speaking of the pressure, what seemed to be the difference, especially in that fourth quarter, being able to get to the quarterback and even uh, knock him down even though you didn't get to him a couple of times? Um, just to be relentless uh, on the guys and, or up front. And, and I challenge those defensive guys at, at halftime because I, I, I believe we can continue to play better on defense. And, and that's probably the first time all season that I, I really – challenge those guys on defense and it's not something I typically do uh, but I, I thought they, they responded especially after we gave up uh, the long run for the touchdown with the quarterback uh, I, I thought from there on they, they really played uh, pretty well. Where, uh, among the things that he did today what are you most proud of when it comes to Skyler? Just the toughness and resolve because he got hit a lot um, and uh, he always he just kept coming back. I mean, the fourth and one play, I didn't have a great vantage point, but I thought they had him p pinned in, and he kind of knocked off that tackle and then kind of ran through a guy for, a, for the first down. Uh, and then I just thought he was more decisive, and we took some shots. I know they were incomplete, but son of a gun, if we can take some shots vertically downfield, it's going to soften some people up. And Malik made a good play. and I thought he, the throw he made to Dalton Schoen was, was big time. So uh, Skyler continues to impress me, and I just love the kid because he's such a competitor. It's been more than 30 days since you guys tasted victory, and I know it's been probably a small lifetime, it seems like, since Mississippi State. How big was this one for you guys? Well, we had a couple of open weeks in there too that didn't didn't make it any didn't make it any easier, um, especially when you lose a game then have, have two weeks. But you know, I, I don't want to get caught up in the results, and that's part of our issue in society is we're all so much based on results. And if the results aren't there, man, it's a negative day. Man, we, we've got to start. We need to focus on the process as players, as coaches. We're six games into this tenure, and it's not going to be perfect. But if we keep attacking the process and keep stacking great days, we're going to have some great days like we had today and I, I one thing you will not hear me talk about with our football team is the negative because there's just too much negative in this world right now were there specific areas that the defense showed up after Dugan's uh long touchdown run? just we're able to keep the cup and, and be able to keep our leverage and we ran through contact a little bit more um and you know we we probably teed off a little bit we we started going towards the quarterback there was one time he gave it they maybe got three yards and, and Wyatt just drilled him because he was keeping it so much and he's a live runner so we were able to take some shots on the kid um and, and the kid's a tough player but uh, uh we started to try to take it out of his hands now the backs are good players and they were so big up front that uh we just had to get some kind of a negative play and get him into a third and five to third and eight because we thought we could get him into a throwing situation, we'd have a good opportunity. He gets away for a broken play and then on a read option for the touchdown. Yeah. Uh, just can you address the tackling issue? Yeah, we, we got to get better.
you talked about needing to get the, the running game going to open up the play act. You talked about yep. the running game today, 94 yards, 61 on one run yep. by Skyler. How difficult was it to run the football against TCU? Yeah, what you needed? yeah give, give TCU credit. We, we have to continue to uh, be more physical up front, continue to, to ID people, continue to ID the pressures when they come. Um, but I, I believe in what we're doing offensively. I believe in, in, in the guys uh, up front, the backs and stuff. Um, we just, we're going to keep grinding and, and we're going to keep working on trying to run the football with more success. Coach, for as young as Wyatt is, um, how do you maybe quantify just what he brings in the leadership department and, and just as a player, as far along as he is as a player? Well, I think Wyatt would tell you he's barely scratching the surface of what he can be as a football player, and that's what I feel. I, I love Wyatt because of his motor and competitiveness and, and those things, but I, I think he can give more. I really do, and I think he knows he can give more. I, he has taken on some some leadership roles. He's a he's a captain as a redshirt sophomore. He's on our leadership council. He's holding people accountable, um, and, and uh, I think the sky's the limit for what his ability is. And and the guys look up to him. I mean, he's he's a freak of nature, and he's a great football player, and, a, and even a better person. And that's what I like most. Is he's a great person. Another, another Wyatt question. I know you've already asked specifically about that sack that he had on, on the first round, yeah. but then three plays later. He gets the pressure that basically ends their final really Just how dominant was he on that final drive? He was, and and he was dominant because we were able to keep him fresh. You know, we didn't have um, uh, Massey today uh, because he was injured. So Kyle and Reggie and and um, Wyatt had to go, and we even had Eric Gallon, and then Eric Gallon got hurt. So we were trying like heck to keep those guys fresh at the defensive end. And um, you know, he he was he's got a motor, and he knew it was a passing situation, and he made some plays. Follow up on Brooks' status. He said he was game time. Yeah, lower lower body injury, and we're hopeful that in the next week he could play. Two weeks, it's it's really day to day. He practiced a little bit, but just didn't have the explosiveness that. Uh, and I didn't want to have him re-injure it. How much of a play was the pump block that you guys got? Over there? Huge play and something that we, we saw uh, in the scheme and, and um, did a really good job of, of, of getting hands on it and almost scooped and scored it. We were trying to, but the big bigger part of that is then to get a touchdown out of it was big. Coach, a couple weeks ago you said when you were at uh, North Dakota State, every win seemed like a bit of a relief. Yep. Um, after the game, you gave me a big hug. Is that more relief or, or elation? That was a joy. That was elation. That was a big win, guys, and I think we all know that. Um, and uh, because of the couple of setbacks we've had, and we've talked about always moving forward, and, and, I, and I truly believe we have a, a, a good football team, but they have to believe it. And when you hear so much negativity, sometimes it takes your belief away. And I was excited for the players first because I know how hard they work and I know how much it means to them. And uh, I, I promise you one thing, those guys are busting their tail and, and want to play at a high level. Anything else? I was going to ask the coach, I guess you don't have Mike, but how promising was it? I mean, we talked so much about Malik, but then you get you, you have Leonard step up and then also Joaquin Gill. So it's like a whole group. Yeah, Joaquin stepped up big, and, and we needed Joaquin too. Um, he'd been nagging hamstring for a long time, and he started to get healthy the last two weeks, and uh, he's playing with some confidence. And, and we need more than just Dalton, Malik, whomever. I think YB's getting better. He wasn't as a big a part of it as what I thought he would be today, uh, but moving forward he will be. Chris Heron the same way. We're, we're getting uh, more confident in, in more guys at the wide receiver position. Yeah, so, um, you know, it'll give us some momentum. A, a, little, a little momentum is better than none. So um, getting it off our back and kind of getting the pressure away from us, um, I think it'll be a good thing going into the month. It was a good week. Uh, we did some good on good. We did uh, a lot of stuff to prepare, you know, a lot of guys getting good looks. And it got put us in a uh, position to do what we did today. You know, just kind of like he said, just being able to come up mm -hmm. in those big situations, you know. Um, yeah, that's, I mean, just being able to be clutch, you know, offensively and defensively in those situations, you know, it was a you know, great feeling after a game. I knew it was just a matter of time. You know, I felt like we got in a rhythm uh, offensively today, um, and we just needed to get back into that. Um, and, you know, we got uh, Coach Mess called some, you know, put us in some great situations and play calls. Um, and, you know, the, the opening play, you know, dumping it down to Malik, I just, I knew we were backed up. I didn't want to take any, any chances. I knew that was a safe throw, um, trying to get us some, some room. And then we, uh, you know, called the, the quarterback draw, and they gave us the look that we anticipated all week um, on film. So 
Uh, I knew it was going to be a big play right right before I even said hike. So, um, you know, we executed it great. So uh, it was a big play for us. Um, and then we get in that situation on fourth and one. I um, was expecting that defensive end to kind of play more down the line of scrimmage, but he, he checked me on the boot. Um, I was able to get outside of him and, and, you know, make a play for my team. You know, and that's, that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about for me. Um, I just... I told the guys in the hotel last night that, you know, the, that I'm gonna be I'm gonna be ready for four quarters tomorrow, and and I'm gonna bring it and, and lead lead the best of my ability, and for them just to stick with me and, and believe in me, and you know it was just it was so much fun, man. We get in that huddle and, you know, uh, the game's on the line. You know, it's fourth and one, and you know my old line is telling me that they love me. You know, and they're, everybody's telling each other they love each other, and we got it. You know, and it's just like. That, that's what that's what this game is all about. The winning or losing, put all that aside. Like that that that, that is what this game is all about. That's why I love this game so much. And um, you know to, to put my you know it makes it easy to go go put your body out there for, to go get a first down. So um, didn't even feel it. So uh, and then getting in the end zone was another just great play call. We ran ran the play earlier in a couple a couple times. They played it differently um, than what we expected, but they gave us the look that we we thought we were going to get on that touchdown. So. Uh, we executed great, and it, it you know allowed us to go uh, go win the game. But our defense did a great job as well. Why Hewitt making a big play, getting stops. You know, it's, it was a team team effort today. Team effort. I'm so proud of our guys, the way we responded the the past two weeks, um, coming off of a, of a bye week and playing the way we did today. It is the third and final segment of the KSO Sunday Show. Derek Young from Case State Online here with Matt Hall. After K-State beats TCU 24-17, to Derek, there's some more to talk about in this game here, but there's big recruiting news today. 2021, the first commit of the 2021 class, Dorian Stevens made his commitment at a unique time. You've seen this kid a little bit. What are your thoughts on him? Yeah, he actually he made his commitment uh, two weeks ago. Right. Uh, and that's why you, you saw the Bring on the Cats tweets from Taylor Brad and, and the other coaches showing their excitement two weeks ago. That was actually Dorian Stevens, the first 2021 commit of the class from the Kansas City Metro, Blue Valley High School, and coincidentally, he made his commitment public on Twitter after Skylar Thompson's QB draw. So, you know, that was the deciding factor, of course. No doubt about uh, it. Dorian Stevens plays wide receiver at Blue Valley, played wide receiver at K-State camp, but then at the end of the camp, he also played a little bit of linebacker, had a private workout with Scotty Hazelton. Uh, just an incredible and tremendous athlete with tremendous upside, very raw and what he can do. They probably don't know exactly what position they're going to play right. him at. He could play linebacker. He could play safety. Obviously, has the skills to play some wide receiver, but I think they're starting to settle into the thought of him being a defensive player. And for it being the first commit of the 2021 class, I think it's a great sign that it's an in-state player. No doubt about it. Another in-state player, Derek, you saw last night. I believe he's here today, too. Noah Boltz, Cop, Rose Hill. You saw McPherson. So there's stuff going on there. Uh, don't want to give away too much like we always say on this show because we love you to subscribe to K-State Online. I say this every single week. But can you give us just kind of a rundown of who was here today and what to look from you from a recruiting perspective the next three, four days on KSO? Yeah, aside from those two 2021 prospects that were on campus, they had, I believe, four official visitors, if my memory serves pretty well. Junior college defensive tackle Robert Hentz out of Northwest Mississippi Community College. Uh, defensive back T.J. Smith out of the Atlanta area. Uh, athlete Dejon Harrison out of Hutto, Texas. I think that's a Houston suburb. Uh, probably someone that can play a little offense or right. defense. Wide receiver, defensive back of that nature. And the last one would be Tanoa Togia defensive tackle at a Rigby, Idaho. So uh, father, son you of taught me this, yeah. former K-State football player, Jerry Togiai. So all four did confirm that all four were on the sideline today prior to the game and are taking their official visits right now. Those are some names to watch for the next few days. Derek will have updates on them. One way or another, a couple, who knows, could be really interested in K-State and pull a trigger at some point not too far in the future. Derek, let's finish up with a couple more questions about this game. Look at Oklahoma here in a second, and we'll get out of here, head home for the evening. On offense, Skylar Thompson, not incredibly efficient throwing the football from a completion percentage perspective. But again, I said earlier, I think 11 completions for like 172, two touchdowns, no turnovers. He ran for another touchdown, had the 66-yard run. I thought he was pretty good today for K-State. Yeah, and there were just some really big, timely clutch plays right. from Skylar Thompson, from his wide receivers. I mean, they've caught a lot of flack the last two or three weeks from you know, all different angles because of the struggles of the passing offense. Malik Knowles had a timely catch on the sideline where TCU yep. probably didn't put their best foot forward in terms of the coverage. Third and 18 on that or play. something like third that. Third and 18, yeah. Malik one -on -one over there. Malik yeah. Knowles, big play. Uh, another one would be Viking Gill. He runs the angle route. I think that was second down. It was in the red zone. So that's a big play. And I think another one, Shabaston Taylor. Yep. Uh, 
probably going to get ridiculed a little bit by the coaches, I bet, for not running through the, the sticks. Chains, yeah. uh, it was third and – was it third, third and ten? Third and 11, and he got ten, I believe. Third and 11, got ten. He's going to get ridiculed for not taking that route deeper into the sticks. But at the same time, he set up the fourth and one play that yep. Skylar Thompson got for the touchdown. Uh, did they get a field goal that drive? They scored. Uh, yeah, yeah, they, they scored. scored. They yep. scored. I want to ask you, too. I mean, we were sitting in the press box. I want to get some transparency. When they went for that fourth and one, I think across the board, we all said, I would kick here. I was go for so it. I you would have. Okay, so D.Y. Them. was the one guy who was with Chris Kleiman. <laughs> I believed in a game that was so low scoring, I'd take the three and win it. They were going to win either way. But I do want to praise Chris Kleiman because I sat here on this show, on Kurtz's show, on all sorts of shows. I didn't like, you know, the punts on fourth on fourth and short on the other side of midfield. I didn't like the field goals that couldn't get you within, you know, less of a score. So I'm not going to criticize when he goes the other side, goes super aggressive, and it works out for him. It was a big play for the team and it shows what kind of attitude they have too. yeah it shows the attitude and you can make an argument uh, at least i would that decision and going for it there because they got six i think on that drive probably won the game you can it's it's one of those decisions that makes her lose you a game that might have won it let's flip in the defense for a second i don't know which one player to single out you know we've referenced Jonathan alexander on special teams making a big play who did stand out for you or was there a position group that you thought was most important in k-state winning this game today against tcu on defense, it was if you take away the missed tackles, I really like what the linebackers did, but you can't take away the missed tackles. Sure. But Daniel Green took a step forward in, in terms of his run fits because they just weren't, frankly, very good at all against Oklahoma State and Baylor. He improved that phase of his game. I think that deserves to be pointed out. I think Jordan Mitty continues to be one of the more consistent defensive linemen that they have on this football team. Someone that I continue to say is a completely different player than what we saw from him last year. Right. Wyatt Hubert still unblockable. They have to put two guys on him or scheme him, and he still finds a way to get to the quarterback. He had the big sack no in doubt. the game that also, you know, played a large role. Jonathan Durham was probably your unsung hero if you're talking about defense because Jerome Jer first got injured in the first half. He plays probably nearly three quarters, and there's not one time where you say, what's Jonathan Durham doing? Which at times, you know, the past two years, you, sure. you probably had those thoughts. Not today. He played good. Absolutely. They tested him a couple of times. He played really well. I'm glad you brought him up. I thought he was a factor today. K-State, like we've told you, four and two, one and two in the Big 12. Welcomes Oklahoma here to Manhattan next week. 11 o'clock kickoff again. Well, for the Sooners when I say again, 11 o'clock kickoff, I believe. Oklahoma's rolling right now. They're a fantastic football team. It's going to be a tough challenge for K-State. But you have to feel way better going into it than you would have three and three off a loss to TCU here today. Yeah, that's will be five 11 a.m. kicks for them on a row. Being in Manhattan, I think Oklahoma probably starts slow, and Kansas State has a chance to compete for a quarter, compete for a half. I know that sounds like, hey, you know, moral victory sure. there, but against Oklahoma, you're probably going to have to search for a moral victory. I tend to agree, but we'll see. They'll be excited to see the Sooners come in here next Saturday at 11. K-State, of course, will be playing to win the game while we're talking about moral victories. It's going to be fun to watch that team play here. Either way, the Wildcats win the day 24-17 over TCU, 4-2 and on the year, 1-2 and in Big 12 play. Appreciate People State Bank and Legacy Insurance for sponsoring us. We really sincerely do. Thanks to Derek for his work. Grant Flanders behind the mic. That's it for the KSO Sunday Show. All that is left to do is tell your friends.